And then it scratched the cage. Oh, and my finger, and I could fire it. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good For example, a lizard of any type, the students can learn a lot of facts, and maybe if there's a question on animal, they can get it right. What if it's yeah. a snapping turtle? Snapping turtle, that's that. That would send them to them. Yeah. I don't think yeah. they would. Because, like, when they're fighting, they can just go. Yeah, they can distract you during a test. Like, yeah. You can hear them pointing in the cage. I've experienced that. I know. I know. Yeah, my guinea pig. Good to have classroom pets because you can do fun activities with them, and you can also learn about. Or some kids have allergies to animals, and like if some if a teacher gets a turtle, then turtles have diseases. Pets um should be banned because when if some kid goes over and knocks over the cage of like what it's in, it could be a distraction or they could be dangerous. Statement was true, but um, it's it helps students gain responsibility and teamwork. It can help you listen more, but sometimes, like if kids are having having a bad day and the animals aren't getting proper care, then they could be making stressful noises, and that could distract their day. Should be banned because. What if you put a, your finger in a cage? Then it could bite you. Oh, if you were a duck, no, then you would They don't bite you. Then you can get like a fish that um doesn't have that doesn't have holes in the cage, or like a lizard that doesn't have holes in the cage. But you, but it has to be clear. Yeah, it can be clear. Okay, the cage. The and fish tank over there. Duh. Cage. And we can't stick our fingers in it. Yeah. So, because when I was in first grade, I had frogs as pets, and we we were watching the life cycle of it, and we did a project on it, so we could research more about it.